Hello, viewers, and welcome to the GI Huddle. Uh, Tim Poole here from Garmin Insider, and I'm with Enrico Bradamante, Chief Commercial Officer at Pariplay. Enrico, how are you today? Uh, good morning, Tim, and good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me on uh, on your podcast. Um, it's uh, it's great. Greetings from Malta. Malta is very warm uh, at this time of the year. We've had an early early summer, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm great. Good, good to hear. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm delighted to speak with you. And, and as you say, it's, it's actually, it's warm in Malta, but it's actually warm in the UK as well. So, uh, you know, just good weather all around. Not, not every huddle, I can say that for sure. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Glad to hear. Yeah, looking forward to talking to you about kind of Parry Play, um, the company and, and latest developments. Um, but to start off with, can you, can you tell us a little bit about your, your background and your career in gaming um, before, before you joined Parry Play? Uh, and of course, you, you became CCO last uh, November, I think it was. Uh, yes, of course. So I, um, I have been now in Malta and in this uh, wonderful iGaming industry for the past 10 years. I was uh, managing director at NetEnt uh, for the first six years. Uh, then I started a few studios. I was an entrepreneur. And uh, the last um, seven, eight years, I have uh, now joined uh, Pariplay. Time has flown. Absolutely. I can't believe it's uh, November uh, last year. So it's coming up to, to a year shortly. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, as a uh, chief commercial officer, I also have a responsibility here for the Malta site. So I'm the managing director uh, here of, of our uh, legal entity and our operations. Uh, and it's been a, a fantastic journey uh, for me going from uh, the supplier side uh, to the aggregation uh, layer. Uh, a very interesting, you know, personal and professional uh, development. Pariplay is a, a very, very successful company. Our growth rate um, has been phenomenal uh, in previous years, uh, and I'm glad to to now be responsible to taking this, uh, you know, forward to the next level. Mm -hmm. I mean, all, all sounds great. And in terms of the first, you mentioned kind of, it's almost a year in the role. Um, I mean, have you got any kind of, uh, I guess it's a little bit early, but any, any, any maybe uh, celebrations planned for, for the year anniversary or anything? But more importantly as well, how have you reflected on, on the first uh, few months in, in the CCO role? Absolutely. So we, we have uh, uh, been fortunate to be having a lot of milestones and a lot of things to to celebrate uh, over these these past uh, uh, seven or eight eight years my, uh, months it feels like years but it's mm -hmm. only months yeah. I, I think maybe the the um the the one um achievement i am most proud of is is the team uh, so so when when i joined one of my key objectives was to consolidate and and build and grow uh, the commercial team, uh, which uh, has now happened. Uh, we have uh, commercial functions in our main office, which is in uh, Sofia, in Bulgaria. Yeah. Uh, we have here, of course, in Malta. And also we have a commercial office in, in Gibraltar. Uh, and we have account managers, vendor managers in, in those locations. And we managed to create a really great team, uh, a fantastic mix of uh, experienced uh, professionals from the industry. Uh, but also of uh, new blood the coming coming outside from outside our industry uh, and and also developing um, colleagues internally and I'm a big big believer in this uh, internal development uh, of, of our talent pool uh, so I would say that's the the, the one milestone that uh, I would uh, I would like to call out and, and celebrate Mm -hmm. A quick question on those. You mentioned a few locations there, Sofia, Malta, uh, Gibraltar as well. Which one's your favorite? Oh, I, I, I cannot have a, a, a favorite. Yeah. You know, they're all very different. Um, I, I have not been yet to our Sofia office. Uh, this is scheduled for September. Uh, mm -hmm. So I very much look forward to being there in person. I have been to Gibraltar. I had been to Gibraltar several times uh, before in, in, in different capacities. Uh, so yes, I would not call a favorite, but mm -hmm. the, the one I'm looking forward the most to going to is now the Sofia because I, I have never been there. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, at the top level for Parry Play, there's there's been a there's uh, been a couple of changes recently. Obviously, the Aspire Global um, less recently uh, took over the company, uh, acquired Parry Play, um, but more recently, Neo Games has acquired Aspire Global. For you guys, operationally, does that change much? And and you know how has that impacted the day to day for for yourself and your team? So from a, a personal perspective and from a, a parry play perspective, uh, there has been essentially zero operational impact. It's, of course, a fantastic development for the company and the group to now being part of uh, Neo Games. Neo Games and Aspire Global are, are entities, are companies that I have been um, knowing and working with uh, over over the years, over my, my last 10 years in the gaming industry. So uh, it's you know, companies and people that I am already familiar with and I'm very comfortable uh, with. And we have now created um, one of uh, probably only two companies that on the B2B side, uh, on, from a technology perspective, uh, cover the entire spectrum. So from a, a, an offering uh, and a strength of, of our companies as, as a group, uh, it's, it's a fantastic story. Uh, for Parry Play specifically, um, I expect that this will give us some, some synergies and uh, market access uh, in the iLottery business uh, where we have not really been, been present. Uh, and also from a, a games development, Neo Games have their, their own uh, game development uh, studio. Uh, and of course, within, within Parry Play, we have our, our wizard studio. Uh, that is mm -hmm. our internal studio. So uh, there will be some some interesting synergies and, and cross pollination. So um, overall, for, to answer your question, from an operational perspective, uh, there has been zero impact to mm -hmm. our um, you know, day to day, to my day to day. Um, the the future, we expect to have. Uh, access to more markets, so the possibility to accelerate the growth from a revenue perspective. And from a product point of view, uh, I, am, I am excited about some of the collaborations that uh, could be on the horizon. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Wizard Games, which um, I'll, I'll definitely ask you about next. Uh, but I wanted to kind of uh, maybe pick your, pick your brain on, on you mentioned the, the, the breadth, the depth of the B2B offering with kind of iLottery being added in. Um, a, a sort of hypothetical question that, that I sometimes ask exec executives is, uh, you know, not a specific example, but just blank canvas. Is it better to be a market leader, absolutely dominant specialist in one vertical, whether it's casino or sports betting, or having, you know, a solid, strong offering in, in every vertical? You know, what is better for you, specialist versus generalist? I think the, the, the reality of the component pieces that are within the Neo Games group uh, is that those, those four key components that you mentioned uh, have been assembled uh, by having companies that have really focused onto mm. those, uh, uh, th those areas. So from a parry play perspective, uh, certainly the focus area has been and is aggregation, number one and the wizard our own game content number two uh, which is which is for the casino market on the sports sports book um aspire global had acquired b2 bet yeah. and their focus has been to develop a fantastic platform uh, for for sports which is now also integrated in the the parry play offering so with one uh with one api uh, you have access to on not only the casino content but also the sports book co uh, sports book content. Mm -hmm. um, Aspire Global, um, a Pam, a, a, a platform with the player management, account management. Uh, it you know provides the glue uh, for for everything from a, from a casino perspective and uh, the um, the managed services uh, to to run the B two C brands. Neo Games is, is iLottery. Uh, and the, the latest acquisition or let's say investment has been on end-to-end uh, -end, uh, bingo, uh, which is a very exciting, again, technology company uh, coming from Latin America, which is one of our focus markets. Um, and, uh, and again, through the Play aggregation layer, through our Fusion platform, 
uh, with the same API, you have access also to a bingo product. So I would say to, to answer your question, uh, it, it's been, I think, the recipe to success uh, for the, let's say, the current Neo Games group uh, to have had individual companies that had focused into, into their markets and become market leaders and successful into their, their own specific area. And subsequently to the acquisitions of Aspire Global First and Neo Games Now, uh, we continue with this same strategy of having the individual companies retain the brand name, retain the structure, retain the organizations so that that focus um, is maintained. Uh, and at the same time, looking for, for synergies on a, on, a, on a commercial level, uh, on, on a customer level, uh, and on a technology level where, where it makes sense. Mm. Well, uh, as you say, you mentioned a few products and, and brands there, but we've, we want to talk about Wizard Games because uh, they came up a couple of times there. A, a, lot of, a lot of recent partnerships and developments with Wizard Games. Can you talk us through you know, what's, what's been happening with, with that part of the business recently and what are your kind of plans with it moving forward as well? Absolutely. Wizard is, I think, one of the um, fantastic success stories that, that we have had. So uh, Wizard as a brand was launched um, at Sigma last year, pretty much when I, when I joined during the month of uh, November. And uh, we, we hired a new management team um, and uh, uh, we started to create more and, and better content. Uh, so, so that that has been a step up uh, when it comes to the, the the game quality, the game production. Yeah. Um, in addition, as you mentioned, we we have been very busy from a distribution perspective and from a, a licensing perspective, and especially when it comes to uh, North America uh, and the U.S. markets and the Canadian markets. Uh, we, um, you know, the, the whole industry is uh, focusing on to those as being, you know, for the next whatever five years uh, as, as being a huge opportunity and Pariplay has ident had identified this as a strategic uh, market to, to enter um, in the past and now we are of course executing that strategy uh, and, and Wizard is the, uh, uh, the product that we're spearheading our entry into the North American market markets with um, and is being followed uh, by the aggregation um, business. Uh, so in Canada, in Ontario, for example, uh, yeah. we also are offering third party, um, third party vendors. Um, and we are starting to aggregate with our uh, Ignite, which is uh, the third party studios that are building on our RGS and uh, leveraging our licenses in order to, to enter the US market. So, so um, uh, Wizard has been a fantastic journey in these last eight years that I have uh, personally witnessed and uh, uh, contributed to. Um, and uh, the, the, the future is, is even more exciting. The company is uh, um, very pleased with the, 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 the progress that has been uh, made. And uh, we're looking at further investments into the quality of the games, into the, the team. Uh, so uh, uh, exciting future, I think, with, uh, uh, with, with, the, the, with, the, with the wizard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, and that's that's a that's a perfect segue for for the final topic and kind of question I want to ask you. Um, you mentioned obviously Wizard, uh, very oriented North America, Canada, and the U.S. Um, overall, looking at those two those two big big nations, but obviously within those nations there are there are many different markets and regions. Um, what are Parry Play's kind of overall aims and targets, and how do you see you know the uh, the business side of things playing out in North America, given that there is. Uh, at this time, particularly, there has been a lot of the last few years anyway, but at this time, particularly, a lot of kind of international expansion um, into uh, a lot of brands going into these markets now. Yes, certainly. So for, for Pariplay, again, is, is strategically important, uh, is one of our growth engines as we have uh, identified them. And um, we are we are executing uh, state by state, as as you know, the licenses are are, are state by state. Yeah. Uh, so we expect to to be live in Michigan very soon uh, and Pennsylvania. Uh, those will be the next the next states. We we launched in uh, in Alberta and we launched in in Ontario uh, when it comes to Canadian provinces. 
Um, and um, I think the key for us as, as an aggregator, so our objective is, of course, to be the number one aggregator in every market that we enter. Uh, and uh, the, the key for us is we have a portfolio of uh, over 80 vendors, over 80 content suppliers at the moment. Um, but for the North American market, we need to have content that is focused on the North American players. Uh, and so we are doing this within, within the wizard portfolio, of course, but there are also some uh, existing uh, brands, some existing companies that we want to add in order to have a, a, a localized offering, which has been a success for, for Pariplay in uh, our market entries in various markets. And in the US, we are, uh, and, and in Canada, in North America in general, uh, we are adopting the same, the same strategy, the same step-by-step. Uh, so, so I would certainly call out uh, these states uh, and the need for us to have uh, a portfolio of, of vendors that are uh, important and relevant in the local market. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, that's in a nutshell, uh, our uh, strategy for North America distribution. Yeah, well, Enrico, thanks very much for, for that, that insight in, into, into the company, the business and, and the industry in general. Um, best of luck with everything. There's, there's plenty of going on as you kind of uh, head into, you know, the, a year in the, in the CCO role. And uh, I wish you the best of luck with the trip to Bulgaria as well. I mean, I do hear Sophia is, is wonderful. Super. Thank you very much for your time and your questions, Tim. And uh, I wish you a great rest of the day. Thank you very much. You too.